In this episode of Our Little World, we're going to learn all about how toilets work. But first, let's meet our team for today. I'm Fergus, and I'm wondering where the water in the toilet's tank comes from. I'm Haley, and I wonder where the water goes once you flush it. Maybe it goes into sewers or rivers and lakes and oceans. I'm Brandon. I'm curious about the way that toilets function, and I'm wondering how that connects to the world in which we live. I'm Raymond, and I'm curious how I can help kids understand how a toilet works a little bit better. Hi, I'm Joylin, and I'm Harper. And they're the behind the scenes team. When this video is over, watch their BTS video and they'll show you how this episode was made. Take one. With authority. Good. Just like us, toilets come in all different sizes, shapes, and colors. Even though they may look different, Almost all of the toilets in our homes, schools, and businesses work the same way. They use water to take everything away. But did you know that the bottom of a toilet has no flaps, valves, or moving parts at all? Somehow, a toilet can keep itself full of water before you go and flush away everything when you're done, all without moving. Well, today, we're at Hoffman Brothers University in St. Louis and Ray is going to show us exactly how that magic works. Do you know how a toilet flushes? Great question. I, that's an awesome question. Toilets are pretty awesome. They're machines that operate without any power cords or batteries, and they do exactly what they need to do without any power at all. Well, before I tell you guys how a toilet works, you guys want to sit down and we can theorize on how a toilet works. You can sketch me a drawing of how you think it flushes and see what you guys come up with. What do you think? Perfect. Let's go sit down and see if we can do that. Haley, it looks like you have come up with a really good theory on how this toilet works. Can you Describe to me exactly what you got here. I think when you push down and flush, there's a little contraption like inside the top of the toilet that goes down. And then it somehow maybe sounds like a signal. And then the water goes down to the um, pipe it's connected to in the wall. And then it goes to the sewer and then into the ocean. All right, Fergus, what did you come up with on your theory for how a toilet works? My theory is that it, when you flush the toilet, it activates something that it pushes down, which heightens the water level, going into the siphon, which fills back up the toilet bowl. So Fergus had a great idea when it came to how the toilet works. It's actually a siphon. Siphons how it flushes the toilet and evacuates the water. Do you guys want to come with me to go learn more about a siphon? Yeah. yeah. We got a demonstration set up over here. So we have a few things set up here to demonstrate how a siphon works. One of the things I want to start with here is the beads. So how a siphon works is that once we have something that's heavier than the other side, it's going to continue to pull. So if we were to take these beads, let me get these beads even, right? So now we got the beads even, but I get this other side just slightly heavier than the other side it will continue to pull. Huh. We can demonstrate that same concept if each one of you guys grab these cups, but what I'm gonna want you to do is I want you to pull the beads, hold it up high, and pull the beads till you get this side heavier than this side. So you'll have a longer leg here and a shorter leg here, and once this side's heavier, it will continue to pull the beads out of the cup. How cool is that? That's so cool. Have you ever seen anything like that before? Yeah. No. Have you done this before? Oh that is 
that's essentially how a siphon works right there. Is, is as one side is heavier, it's gonna continue to pull. We can do the same exact thing with water. So we got a hose here. And I got this container full of blue water here. We're gonna lift it a little bit higher than this other container. We'll set it right up here on top of this box as we get that up there. So now what we wanna do is we're gonna get this hose completely full of water. And just like I showed you on that one where you had a short leg and a long leg. So we're gonna get the hose all the way in the water. Let's get the hose completely full. Now, when we have more on our long leg than we do our short leg, and the weight of the water is heavy, it will continue to pull all the water out of this tub right here. Oh, oh, there oh. Oh. And there we go right there. Does one, do one of you guys wanna hold this side for me? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure our hose doesn't come out up here. But what you see here is we have a short leg on this side and this long leg here. So the weight of the water, it's heavier on this side than it is on this side. And it's gonna continue to pull the water out of this container and down to this container. And that's how a siphon's created. And then this is exactly how the siphon stops. Once air enters the top of this part right here where you got the short leg coming up, once you have air to that point, siphon's gone, then it, then it stops. So the way that this is creating that siphon is because there's more water on this long leg, which is creating more weight than on this short leg. Ah, that makes sense. And Raymond, is that how all toilets work? That's exactly how a toilet works. Essentially a toilet has a long leg on it and a short leg on it, and that's what creates a siphon. We can go upstairs and I can show you exactly how the toilet works. All right. All right, so what's pretty awesome is we were able to 3D print a toilet here. Very cool. Is that what you guys thought the inside of a toilet would look like? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's essentially what the inside of a toilet looks like. So what we're gonna do is we can create a siphon here and watch what actually happens inside this toilet as this fills. So what I have to do is I gotta fill up this bowl and we're gonna fill up the short leg. And once we get that full, we'll flush it by pouring water in here. And you'll see, once we get water over into the long leg, how it creates a siphon. Oh, it's like the beads. It's gonna be just like the bead experiment that we did. So let's get some water in this cup here. See what we can do. Let's get in this full. So, if you see, I'm watching I'm watching that pipe down there, getting it just right. So now we're right at the perfect point of water in there. So now when you go into the bathroom and you look at your toilet, there's always water in there, right? So we can flush it now by dumping the water up here. Whoa. So what's happening is that water's coming over, over the short leg, down the long leg, the weight of the water will continue to pull the rest of the water out of the toilet. And then on your toilet, it would continue to fill the bowl like we did at the beginning, so it has a perfect amount of water in there to create a siphon the next time you need the toilet. Can you guys visualize everything that you just learned about a siphon and how it would work when you can see the side of the toilet here? So we can see the molding of the toilet, but we got the bowl, and when we come out of that bowl, we have that short leg here and our long leg here. And that's how we're creating the siphon with the toilet. Sometimes at, at home at my bathroom, I see the water kind of flows down like right there. Yes. What's happening? So in this toilet right here, what's actually happening is we will flush this toilet and then there's a mechanism that pull up and let the water in. So what actually happens is it's washing the side of the toilet from the water that comes there, and it's also filling the bowl back up. So remember at the beginning, we had to have the right water level there. It's gonna fill the bowl back up. It's also got a little tiny hole right down here, and that's gonna push the water up over the small leg, and then allowing the siphon to activate at that point, pulling the rest of the water out of the bowl that was up here. Oh, great question. This cap right here. Yes. 
Um, why is that there? That's so I can't just pick the toilet up and move it all anywhere I want. There's two bolts right underneath there that's holding the toilet to the floor and to the piping system so we can send it out to the sewer. So Raymond, if we took one of these larger toilets and we cut it in half, is this what we would see in, on the side of, that, uh, of, of those toilets that are real? Essentially almost the same thing. Okay. The thing that you're gonna see would be a little bit different if I cut this one right in half, is that we have the same concept here of the small leg, the long leg, except for our long leg is gonna be shaped a little bit different and our toilets in North America typically go out the bottom, especially here in the United States. So we're gonna go up, it comes back to the back here, and then it kicks back in, and then goes right out the bottom. So our connection point, right where the bolts are that you just asked about, is right there, and the, all the contents of the toilet go out the bottom. Where does the water go? The water in the toilet bowl goes through the bowl, into the piping system, and out to the sewer. What we have downstairs, below all these toilets, is a bunch of clear piping, and we can see exactly where all the water is going. Do you guys want to go downstairs and see where all the water is going? Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Please join us in our discussion segment, where we dive even deeper into the world of toilets and plumbing. If you'd like to learn more about toilets, print some coloring book pages, or even download a 3D model of a toilet, check out our website, ourlittleworld.show for these resources for kids and grown-ups alike.